Hello everybody, welcome to Short Shot Archery. Anthony here, and today at Short Shot Archery, we're gonna try to answer the question of, is it better to tune with you shooting the bow, or is it better to tune with a shooting machine shooting the bow? Now, I personally think it's, it's gonna be better with you, the archer, you know, tuning your own bow, but uh, we're gonna find out, uh, we're gonna see how uh, the arrows react with me shooting and how they react with the shooting machine shooting. Now, before we get started, we should probably go over what equipment I'm going to be using for this video, uh, you know, bow and everything, arrows, uh, things like that. So, first off, with the bow, are using a gray archery AIX riser, biter plunger, biter clicker, Shiboya sight, uh, the True Ball XL Chef Edition uh, scope here. Um, for limbs, we're using the uh, the Wea, the Win and Win Wea Wiss uh, NSG limbs. Uh, we have a 20 strand Fast Flight Plus string uh, running in at 23 uh, centimeters for the brace height. Uh, two point knocking point top and bottom. Some dampeners on the limbs. Shrewd um, Ravel uh, stabilizer setup. And uh, that pretty much makes, uh, well, the whole bow. Now, we should get a reading on how much weight I am drawing at uh, my fingers at full draw. So we're coming in at about 46 pounds. And this weight will be the same for both me shooting it with my fingers and uh, the shooting machine because we can crank it back to my draw length to the point that the clicker clicks. Now for the arrows, I'm using uh, Easton X10s, 410s, C4s. Um, they are equipped with uh, pins and pin knocks, uh, Easton pins and pin knocks, and Easton 120 grain points in the front of these. We have Jet 6 SV spin vanes and I'm pretty sure they're two inches. I've, I've been playing around with that stuff. And yes, they are two inch Jet 6 SV vanes. I just double checked. And now I think it's time to get started uh, with this test. I will be shooting uh, two fletched and two unfletched arrows um, or bear shafts as we like to call them at the target and then I will be putting the bow onto the shooting machine, getting it set, and shooting two more, two additional sets of two fletched, two bear shafts into the target. And I think the goal of this is we're gonna measure the distance between the fletched and the bear shafts. Um, we're not gonna worry so much about height, but uh, definitely the width of it. So if, um, so for example, if my bear and fletch shafts are six inches apart and the shooting machine shows they're eight inches apart, then there's a two inch difference between, uh, well, what you, you know, a human is shooting and the shooting machine. Of course, maybe it depends on the shooting machine and such, but it's gonna give us a good idea. If they match up basically perfectly, then I can be pretty, uh, you know, rest assured that uh, the, the shooting machine and my shooting are are pretty much on the same same lines. But uh, you know, that is just a theory, and we're gonna see how it actually turns out. And I'm supplying all this information so you guys can make your own decision at home. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna do one fletch, one bear, one fletch, one bear, and. Uh, we're gonna see what happens. So, fletch shaft first. And I'm shooting extra bear shafts and extra fletch shafts, you know, just to, to mitigate a little bit of, of human error. And, and it could, we could have some machine error too because when, this, when that shooting machine fires, there's some serious vibrations. So, we're gonna see. This is gonna be really cool. I'm super excited. Right. 
Now the bear shaft. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, another flat shaft. And one more bear shaft. Let's go check it out. All right, so uh, here we have it. Knocking point's definitely a little low, um, but again, it, it doesn't matter too much because the bow's not changing from how I'm, you know, from me shooting it with my fingers to shooting it out of the shooting machine. So when this shoots through the shooting machine, we should get a similar group. You know, maybe some of this is, is my own error, but uh, we're gonna mark each one of these. Uh, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna put a little F for fingers. Of course, we're gonna leave these shafts in the target. And I'm just going to shoot uh, these other four arrows out of the uh, shooting machine. That way we can see uh, the two different groups. Uh, first though, uh, we have to go and set up the shooting machine and check this out. Uh, oh, also, <laughs> uh, additionally, there is really not a lot of difference left and right wise between these. It's, it's up and down, which is, again, is probably my knocking point so I, I need to adjust that uh, but that's not really a big deal but left and right it's it's no more than I would say the two thicknesses of this sharpie marker so about there's about an inch between uh, this bottom flat uh, so there's about an inch between this bottom bear shaft and this top flat shaft this space in between the two. I know the camera's at an odd angle in a, in a way, but again, I don't want to shoot my own equipment, especially with the shooting machine, because it can be a little bit unpredictable until you get it all lined up and such. So uh, let's go do that now and see how the two compare. All right, so uh, we're, we're cranking it back for the, well, not technically the first time, but this is the first official time. Uh, if you do see other uh, holes in the target face. It's because I have to sight this thing in. No, it will not. It'll, it won't be in the center. It's probably going to be upper upper left hand side, probably around the six seven ring. Uh, we will see. Now, if I haven't uh, mentioned before, there is some vibration to this shooting machine shooting. So to ensure that I'm going back to the same place, I have marked, well, and weighted down, I've weighted down this stand and I have marked where this stand sits. So hopefully I can, uh, you know, match the settings every single time. So here we go with the first shot. Boom. All right, it's downrange now. 
Okay, so it's time to uh, load in the second shot. We have a bear shaft this time. And... All right, we have a safety and everything on this, if anybody's curious. Uh, this is actually a professional product. I did not build this myself. Uh, there is a guy, Coops Bo Smith. This is what this is called. Um, Coops Archery uh, builds this uh, this Bo Smith shooting machine. So uh, I, I trust in them and their and their design for this to work correctly. Now before we fire, uh, we're going to double check all of our, our spots, alright, everything looks like it's set up correctly, so we're going to go and shoot number two. This is the bear shaft, we'll see where it goes. Whoa! Alright, uh, that's going to be interesting. Well we have two more arrows to shoot still, so let's see. All right, so for arrow number two, we have another fletch shaft. Well, not really another. It is the final fletch shaft. After this will be done fletch shafts, and all we will have left is a single bear shaft. All right, here goes. Fletch shaft number two, arrow number three. One more to go after this shot. Boom. All right. <laughs> All right, final arrow, final bear shaft. Okay, here we go. Everything matches up here, and we're still we're still good up here, so we're good to go. Let's fire this final one. Boom! All right, there we are. Let's go check it out. Wow! All right, so. <laughs> Interesting. I think this is very interesting. Um, it really uh, demonstrates, I guess, the importance. The shooting machine is demonstrating the importance of having a correct um, knocking point. <laughs> because, like I said earlier, when I shot it by hand, my knocking point must be a little bit off. I need to uh, correct that because the bear shafts are below the fletched. Uh, for the shooting machine, the bear shafts are drastically below the fletched, which, in a way, can kind of I, I, in in a way, in my mind, this indicates to me the importance of well, making sure something as simple as your knocking point is correct on your bow. And uh, I'll I'll bring the camera around to get some more angles of this so you guys can see it better, but uh. These <laughs> arrows are definitely, uh, you know, a good foot, if not more, apart. With the bear shafts actually pointing downwards to the ground, compared to uh, the fletch shafts and their bear shafts from my fingers that that were shot. Uh, the bear shafts are basically straight still, and the fletch shafts are, are fine as well, and they're in a very close proximity to one another. Now, how do we compare these two? Obviously, there's a difference between uh, these bear shafts and these fletched, and these bear shafts and these fletched, but I think that's just a knocking point issue. For me, the best way to judge and see if a shooting machine is, is a viable tuning method compared to just shooting them with your fingers is like the dispersion and like how, how far, how much further apart are these 
uh, flex shafts and these bare shafts from uh, the other ones that were shot with my fingers over here. And for the most part, honestly, just eyeing it up, these two groups, like size-wise, with you know distance between them, yes, you know this is spread out a little bit more. This is a little bit tighter, but even width-wise, uh, the width is basically the same. And I think that speaks volumes to how consistently a machine is going to shoot it, as long as you make sure that you set it up basically exactly the same every single time. Now, bear shaft-wise, uh, these bear shafts from the shooting machine are a little bit more spread apart, but they also didn't fly as well as the bear shafts from my fingers. And the ones from my fingers are grouped probably a little bit closer, but there is some elevation in their grouping. You know, we have one high and one low on the finger arrows. Whereas the bear shafts from the shooting machine are just lower than the fletched that they shot, that shot out of it. But height-wise, they're actually basically the same. It, it, it's, it's pretty impressive. So what does this tell me? Uh, for me, I think shooting uh, and tuning your bow with a shooting machine, even for Olympic recurve, could be a pretty viable option. And I would be interested to see uh, you know, the performance difference uh, between the two, and that might be something that I'll try out uh, down the road. Of course, I have to figure out a way to really uh, you know, show that there is a performance difference between uh, a bow tuned with my fingers and me shooting it and a bow tuned with a shooting machine, and then how that relates to my shooting, because again, it's using a mechanical release, and that will never be the same as my fingers, or, or probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll we'll have to talk to Brady or something about that. But um, <laughs> uh, other than that, though, I think this is a pretty wild test. Uh, there'll be more close-ups. Let me bring some more angles around to show you guys what I'm seeing here, since you know you're only seeing it from one angle. Let's uh, let's let's give that a go. All right, so in my interest of, you know, making this as, you know, clear and as accurate as possible, right here are fingers. Right here is the shooting machine. Now, as we come from the side here, look at that. Look at that bare shaft difference. Uh, not so much in the height from these to these or these to these, but more in the, the angle. Look, look at the angle of these. They're pointing so much more down than the straightness of the finger shafts. So finger shafts, shooting machine shafts. But in the finger shafts here, you can see how there is a problem with my knocking point. It needs to be moved because these finger shafts, these bear shafts, should move up towards uh, these flat shafts here from my fingers. Now, on another note, group sizes, as you can see, there is there's about a finger between these two. And if we move up to these, there is about a finger between these two. So pretty consistent, I would say, overall. All right, so uh, there you have it. Uh, fingers versus shooting machine. Uh, you know, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Uh, it did take me an entire day to just film this, like 12 hours. <laughs> because, you know, I want to get things right. And you're probably thinking, wow, Anthony, you're slow. That, that, that could be the case, too. But... I'm trying for accuracy here, everybody, and um, that's why I've, you know, I included in this video all the equipment I am using, you know, my brace height, uh, my type of string, and things like that. So hopefully, if somebody's interested, you can do this at home and see what kind of results you get and compare them to mine, because, you know, I, I honestly don't care uh, if the shooting machine or the fingers are better. 
I'm about just finding out, you know, which is the best. Like I, I don't, I don't have a particular horse in this race. You know, you know, may the best win. And I think still at this point, both are very viable options. Obviously, the fingers is going to be much more affordable than buying yourself a shooting machine. Now, if you're a compound shooter, especially a world-class compound shooter, or maybe even a world-class recurve shooter, you should probably consider getting yourself a shooting machine. Uh, especially for compound, since the two will match up perfectly, as long as you're shooting compound with the release and not compound with fingers. Uh, again, uh, this test was with an Olympic recurve, since that is my major forte at this point in time. So, let me know in the comments section uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, if you want a round two, you know, explain why. I like uh, criticism that has a reasoning behind it. Don't just tell me it's dumb. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. I had a blast doing this. And as always, happy shooting!